Welcome to Google or Google to Jenkins documentation office hours. It's the 21st of January, 2021. Thanks for being here. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and talk to the topics. So I wanted to solicit comments on a proposal I just created for a Jenkins contributor summit. Uh, and so that was one I would love to invite Kristen, you and Zina both to comment on it, to give me insights, to suggest ideas, et cetera. Uh, then I had pull request progress, still a point for us to discuss. Jenkins and Google Summer of Code and the Jenkins Wiki Plan were all topics on my list. Zina, what would you like to put on the list? Um, Jenkins on AWS PL. Okay, all right. So. Let's put that one at the top of the PR list. So Jenkins on AWS. Okay, and let me go grab that one. Sorry, I should have already included that in the uh, PR status check. I thought we, had, oh no, we, I haven't, oh, I'm so sorry, Zinab. That's been approved for two weeks by Marky and I have not done the review and merge. So yes, let's get that one. PR 4055, Jenkins on AWS, uh, reviewed and approved by Marky. Any other topics you'd like to put on the agenda? Um, more like next steps. What um, content would you like to work on next for Jenkins on Fiverr? Great, okay. All right, okay. Kristen, any particular topics you'd like to add to the agenda? Um, not that I can think of, but seeing the next steps for other documentation stuff would be really interesting. Good, I good, just, I just okay. don't know what they would be right now. <laughs> right, okay, well, and, and maybe, maybe what I could do is, I would propose under next steps, let's hide Jenkins wiki plan as a part of that, because I think that's a good candidate for a next step and others okay. might be uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes improvements, uh, including things like solutions page. I'm sorry, say that again, Zinab. Um, Kubernetes solutions page. Oh yes, okay. yes, yes. Kubernetes general docs. Very good, yes, the Kubernetes solution page, which we don't have one at all right now. And solutions page, very good. Okay, excellent. All right, any any other topics before we start working through the agenda? That's it for me. Okay. All right, so uh, as, a, as a brief on the first one, and I promise not to spend much, the, I've created a proposal for an online contributor summit. Uh, a contributor summit is an event that we've held once a year to encourage people who contribute to Jenkins to meet together to talk about what Jenkins should be doing in the coming year. We used to do it regularly at FOSDEM, an open source conference in Belgium but that conference will be all online this year. So instead we're going to do this as an online event. Um, the idea is we'll take three days. We'll start with a combined everyone in the session, 90 minute session on day one, identify the topics during that 90 minute session and who the session leaders are for the, set, the topic sessions. And then during the next two days, we will have subsets of the group meet for topic specific discussions, then gather everyone back together for a, a full group session to, to hear the summary of what happened. So start together, split out, end together. And, and here are the, the proposals and you'll notice documentation figures into the list as does Google Summer of Code, as do lots of other things. So Zinab and Kristen, for instance, I would love to have both of you attend these, these sessions, particularly the open and the, the topic session on documentation, if you'd be available. 
it, it, your input would be highly valued and your insights would be a great help to the to the group. Sure. Sure. Okay. Then in terms of, of just looking for your feedback, and that's really it on this topic, I don't think we should take the time in our meeting today to review the document in detail, but if, if you or if either of, or both of you could review it, I'd be most grateful. Um, all right, I'll go through it probably after a bit. And just like a, actually a question, a point of clarification. Is this like every every uh, SIG in Jenkins is it, participating? It is. It's trying oh, cool. to invite every SIG in Jenkins to nice. every SIG and every, basically everything. It, the, it starts with officers. So mm -hmm. the security officer, the security topic, infrastructure and releases, then goes into SIGs. Mm -hmm. And what we'd like to do is invite all of them to come. Now, some of them some of them may not be there. You know, this will be based on who's interested and who's not. Sure. But or we, who's available, we will, right? <laughs> Exactly. If yeah. your schedule doesn't allow it, it doesn't allow it. Right. Okay. Perfect. Because that's a, the cool part about, I actually kind of like where um, documentation is going because it's such a great thing to pull everyone together. <laughs> yeah, just from that perspective. But sure. All right. Agreed. And, and I, I, I think you're right. It's a, a great opportunity for us to, to remind people that you can contribute in more ways than just writing code. Right. All right, okay. Now, one of the challenges there is there's a question inside the document about how to do online scheduling. If you've got ex positive experiences, oh, actually, Zenob, yours may be a good one. If you've got experiences in your work scheduling the She, code Af she Codes Africa sessions, I would love to get insights on, hey, how do you schedule groups effectively so that they actually meet successfully, et cetera. I put some ideas in that document, but I have relatively little experience doing that well. So would yeah. love your insights. Okay, I'll go through and see if um, I have anything to bring to the table. Great, thank you. All right, so then let's talk about pull request progress. So now it's time for the embarrassment phase where I haven't reviewed a pull request that's been open for two weeks and that's terrible. Sorry about that, Zinab. Thank you very much for creating it. So images and text ready to go, ready for a way to show, oh, this looks, looks like great work, thank you. So let me just put it in um, Mark or Kristen to review and merge. So that we've got two reviewers. Um, Kristen, I don't remember. Do you do you have merge permission to Jenkins.io? I might. Uh, okay. It's been, well, a little, if, it's been a little bit. That, that's why I'm like, I think I do, but I don't know if anything had been cleaned up recently. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Great. Uh, okay, so let me check. So that's, <laughs> let me check. <laughs> let's. How about I'm going to set my goal by next meeting, so that so that I don't have to hang my head in shame at not having having done that review. Thank you very much for doing that writing, Zina. That's been that's much appreciated. Thank you. All right. Any anything else on that pull request? Um, nothing else. Okay. Then on the, the scaling Jenkins on Kubernetes pull request, I haven't had the time yet to meet with Kristen to get her coaching on how to do, how to resolve the, the complications that I had in trying to work through it. So that I will hope, I'm going to set my goal to, by meeting two weeks from today, And sorry to give myself more time there, but because I had some complexities, I suspect we've got to align my scheduling Kristen's for her to coach me sure. on what mistakes I'm making. Yeah, sure. However, right. it's fine. Um, whenever you're free or just kind of let me know and I'll see what's going on. <laughs> Great. 
Excellent. All right. Anything else on pull request progress? Okay, next steps for Jenkins documentation. So one for me, when I, when I think about is, so we've got an open question from Daniel Beck. He asked a very good question or made a very keen observation. His, his question was, hey, Mark, is there any work to make the Jenkins documentation more structured and more organized than, than the current collection of things that are starting to adopt? It's starting to feel more disorganized than it was two years ago, for instance. Uh, what's happening is new content is arriving. Uh, but at an uneven pace, pace and with and with uneven um, quality. So many things are are copied from the wiki without without major edits, and they needed major edits. So those those that was his question. My thought was, uh, okay. should we we review the docs in an office the docs outline in office out in these office hours and discuss how we think things should be revised, uh, structure discussion, um, propose revisions, propose. Uh, additional content topics that are that are currently missing or weak mm -hmm. so basically what it is is would would the two of you be willing to be part of a documentation inventory exercise inventory review exercise if i brought a list of something like that would you be willing to participate and say, oh, I think we should do it this way or that way. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, and this is something I have been looking for or was looking to help with anyway for the documentation sake. So yeah, I feel bad that I've not attended many very many of the SIG meetings recently. So didn't really know what the progress was. Um, well and, and this one I think I think office hours here this session is perfect. Because hearing hearing Kristen from you and from Zinab on, hey, these ideas work well together. No, these not so much. Mm -hmm. That's that's a great way for us to collaborate and, and identify, okay, which things are more interesting or which are less. Mm -hmm. So how about we take the following mark to start something and share with others for more feedback. Our dog. Good to start somewhere, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, well, because I had, as an example, I had a flawed concept that ooh, we should split the documentation into user guide and admin guide. But now okay. that I've looked at it after two years, I think I've realized I can't tell the difference between user guide and admin guide. Uh, and I, I look at the FreeBSD handbook, and they have only one. It's for users and admins. And so we're and we're modeled after that. So it's those kind of things that I think I'd like to discuss with the two sure. of you, but I'm not ready for it this week. It'll it'll need to be a few weeks out. Oh, great. Yeah. And if you need any help coming up with that list or like starting somewhere or like helping look at the BBSD handbook. Yeah. Just, or just let me know. So because okay. the BBSD handbook, because yeah, that's a huge undertaking of looking through all of our <laughs> all of our documentation. But Right, it's nice, and it's nice to finally be at a point, though, that we can actually even have these conversations too. Right, like, <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Well, well, it's 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 impressive how much information we've gathered in fifteen years of yeah. Yeah, now almost sixteen years of running the Jenkins project. There's a lot of information, mm -hmm. and organizing it is is a big job. Yes. So. You know, I didn't actually answer the question, what's next yet? This is just trying to identify what's next. Do you think yeah, that exercise? Yeah, I think exercise... this is a great idea, and I would love to be part of it also. OK, great.
Okay, great. Super. Now the next topic was we know that there's a big gap for Kubernetes documentation still, right? There's the, the world can't get enough of Kubernetes documentation in general. There's just so much, so much of interesting happening in that space with OpenShift and with the various Kubernetes releases and the transition from using official Docker images to using container images that are Docker compatible, but not necessarily generated by Docker. You know, there are all sorts of interesting things there. Zina, are there specific areas where you say, ooh, I would like to see this as an enhancement in the Kubernetes documentation? Or Kristen, same question to you. So um, I think um, the first thing first, I think um, we'll need, because um, most of the work we worked on during the Google System of Docs program was um, majorly um, beginner or um, non-production um, content. Because um, I don't know if you noticed, someone posted a tweet some time back that the documentation is great, but um, the content is majorly um, mini queue and not um, really production. And so I think it would be a great idea if we can work on um, something um, more advanced for more advanced users as regards um, Jenkins on Kubernetes. So, um, I plan on doing um, a kind of research to see um, content that will be more suitable, but I've not been able to do that yet. But I think that's um, one suggestion that I have. I like that. I like that a lot. So more advanced use cases are, are very interesting, right? And, and they certainly are. We, we know that there, there are people who are looking for those you cited that very good example of the user who said, hey, the, the initial documentation is great, but it's Minikube centered. And most, most production installations will be using something much bigger than Minikube. Yeah. Okay, right. good. It's good to have some, it, I, I think it was still worth it. Like it was really good to even have kind of the, the basics of getting started, but. And yeah, were, so. You're right, because um, I actually had to reply to tweet, um, and I just made mention that considering the fact that um, we didn't have any content on Jenkins on Kubernetes before, it made um, sense to actually start from the basics, then go right up to more advanced content, and that's where it's that way. But obviously, it's in Jenkins documentation roadmap to have more advanced content as time goes on. Definitely. Good, good point. And you, you just mentioned something that I had not even thought of. We should look at the Jenkins roadmap while we're here, because that may give us some other hints what, what things have already been identified for next steps. Good, yes, okay. So now in terms of the more advanced concepts around Kubernetes, you, you noted, Zina, that it needs some more research. Um, I'm, I'm accustomed to thinking of things like ingress um, yeah. alternatives as one of the, the common hotspots. Um, mm -hmm. Are there other things like that? Uh, for instance, I don't know, is it is one uh, scaling decisions and to split and when to and when to combine? And, and that's not really that's not really Kubernetes specific even. Uh, that's more of, hey, when is your Jenkins controller so big that you should split, split it out? Um, Kristen, any other insights you could offer there on likely hot topic areas? Oh, is there anything about OpenShift, for instance, versus, yeah. uh, versus Kubernetes um, more, OpenShift period. <laughs> more, more generic Kubernetes, right? Yeah. Or maybe it's OpenShift versus EKS. 
versus AKS versus whatever IBM's thing is called and Oracle's and, you know, choose your cloud providers, etc. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying like I'm trying to think of other types of content here. Um, uh, did the uh or so Zina when you were someone mentioned something, did they mention anything they were looking for in particular? Like that so um, nothing in particular. The only um, observation he mentioned was that um, it's the documentation was mostly centered on using MiniQ. Ah, uh, okay. And, yeah, exactly. Which would obviously not be used in a production environment. So right. I think the solution to that switch would be um, probably releasing um, an alternative to MiniQ on production environment. Mm -hmm. So would this be a good case for building out more of those solution pages? So like, I know that since yeah. working on the Amazon, yeah, so it's like, oh, here's like getting started. And then great, now that you see how it works, you know, like, like the basics, here, here's how to get it, you know, here's the Amazon page, like here's Google, here's OpenShift, that, just like anything where just kind of continue to work down or? I think that's ingenious. Yeah. So Amazon, Azure, Google, et cetera, you know, mm -hmm. IBM, Oracle, all of them. Uh, they're, they're a bunch of cloud providers, DigitalOcean, all sorts of dot, okay. dot, dot. Yeah. Like just in case there's anything like a gotcha or you mm -hmm. know, you know, for each of the environments. Cause Right, like the basics of the Kubernetes, like how Kubernetes works, and I thought it's going to be the same everywhere. But it's like, oh, here are some tweaks that we had, you know, like some, and especially this is a good chance to get from experts to, you know, people in the community who are using it in these environments <laughs> to chime in. Right. That'd be, that'd be an interesting thing. Like, how do we encourage people um, who may not? To, to kind of help contribute in that way, right? Like they, maybe they're like, oh, I'm, I don't feel like I can write a whole document about something, but I'd be willing to offer tips and suggestions. Um, mm. What would be a good way to gather stuff like that? Well, I, I, so, hey, we've, we've actually got, when we have entry pages like that, we've mm -hmm. got this thing that it's not terribly well highlighted but for instance, if I look at the installing Jenkins page and let's look at Kubernetes, if I jump to the bottom of this page, there's the improve this page link ah, okay. that will put me right into the place where I can edit directly on that thing. Now, maybe we could as, do as simple as remind people somehow, hey, look, mm -hmm. you know what? You can propose edits. It's just this easy. That would be real. That would be maybe a really cool thing to highlight just as a, you know, encourage people to share their, their knowledge and it's showing them, yeah, it's not complicated. <laughs> right, right. probably the lowest, the low, you I'm know. I'm sorry, I think I missed, like, how did you get to this um, GitHub page from? Yeah, good. okay, very good. So I love you saying that, Zina. Thank you. That was excellent. <laughs> how did you get there? Okay, so what I did was I went to the, the installing Kubernetes page, right? So here, here is one of our pages and it could be any page, but one of our pages. And if I go to the very bottom of the page, on the, on the bottom of the page is this improve this page or report a problem. So if I click report a problem, it puts me into submitting a GitHub issue. But if I click improve this page, it will take me right to the editor for that page. Wow. And so now I can, I can edit directly. Now, now, if I remember right, there are some, some hidden complexities in, the, in, in this particular one because we've got some reusable content that we're doing right here, right? We're doing content reuse. And because we're doing content reuse, they may say, oh, I didn't find the page I wanted because it's inside the reused content. 
So, but, but nonetheless, there is something to be said for, hey, if you just actually, maybe that, maybe I just described it. We need a way of allowing people to jump into the reusable content for this page, because the bulk of this page is in this underscore Kubernetes page, I think. Is he not? Yes. Is it? Yeah. Yes. So, or if they say, oh, I've got a setup wizard problem. Okay. We need to find a way to take them. Maybe we need to. Yeah, actually, maybe that would help also with the visibility because one of the problems I have with getting people to read this link is it's at the bottom of the page. What if we decorated each heading? Right now it's decorated with this hyperlink. What if we had a pencil right next to it in addition that would pop them into the editor for that section? Maybe, yeah, maybe that'd be good. And that also highlights that, yeah, that you can help contribute to the document. Right. Too. Right. Give them a sense of, oh, oh, hey, not only could I, I can, I can link to it here, but yeah. So let me make myself a note of that. I'm not sure if it's even possible, but could we encourage cont more contributions by adding a pencil icon? at the same location as the hyperlink icon in the same. Okay, sorry, uh, just back to, back to our original question. Kubernetes documentation, does, does this feel reasonable to you, Zinab? I think you've described very well what we should what we should want to do and the research on what content would be most useful would be a great help. So I think um, we've answered this now and at least from all this mapped out, I, I kind of like have it to do already to find out more and um, what content would be useful um in the documentation then also i think the um the solution page also would really help with this because um checking existing solution pages i could see that there are also links to other resources outside um jenkins documentation that could um help users so that could also be something we could use to um Yeah, exactly. Courses, video tutorials, courses outside the, from from outside companies. Yeah, exactly. Good. Okay. Super. Anything else on either of the two Kubernetes topics there, the documentation, the documentation or the solutions page? Because if I remember correctly, Zena, we don't have a solutions page right now for Kubernetes, right? What we have is, we have, let's see, where are the solutions pages? We have Docker, right? We don't even have a page. So this is a, a, a fresh start. Yeah. Okay. Next topic was Jenkins roadmap. And I wanted to take a quick look. It's been a while since I've looked at the docs roadmap and I, I'm, it's embarrassing to admit that it's been a while since I've looked, but if we look at, so Jenkins on Kubernetes is current project, admin guide overhaul, user guide improvements and solution pages. Okay, so we've talked about all those topics, good. All right, so that's really good. And change log automation is in. That one is now done. I need to fix that. Okay. What else have we got? There? Okay, good. So and Google season of docs 2020 is now also done. OK. 
Okay. And Jenkins on Kubernetes for me, I feel like that one's still in progress because we think we've got more to do there. Zinab, are yeah. you okay if we leave that one in the current list rather than putting it yes. as complete? Okay, yes. great. And oh, oh, that's another one, agent terminology cleanup that we hadn't talked about. So terminology cleanup is certainly, certainly a place that many can help with. Terminology corrections. Okay. Great. All right. So then last topic for me on, on this, this, where are we going? This Jenkins wiki plan actually is part for me of the, the question about docs organization because the wiki is a crucial contributor to this documentation inventory review. There's a lot of content there from a lot of, with a, a wide variance in quality of the material or accuracy. But part of that is review the content and then decide where should it go. So for me, it's a, it's a perfect fit for this proposal to let's do an inventory and let's talk about the inventory as a group. Um, let's see. So the, the, the other parts of that plan are when do we migrate and turn the thing off? And, and that I'm less concerned about because it, it's a lot of work to turn it off and make sure that everything redirects correctly and not a lot of gain because we don't actually spend that much energy maintaining this server. So it's cheap to maintain right now and expensive to stop. Okay, any, any other topics with regard to next steps? What's up for documentate Jenkins docs? Um, so um, something else just came to mind about um, getting more contributors to Jenkins documentation. So um, is there currently a page on um, Jenkins.io that um, explains how um, new contributors could contribute to Jenkins documentation or a document somewhere that pretty much explains the steps and probably links to this roadmap for people to be able to see, okay, this is what we're currently doing in documentation, this is what we have plans for, these are the things we've been able to achieve. Because, um, it's um, also very important to try and have this information, um, if not in one place, but um, in close proximity. So whoever wants to contribute to the documentation can um, easily get all the information they need without getting discouraged from having to look around and try and find their way around. Good, okay, good point. Yeah, so so let's, I mean, we, we certainly know one of the experiences from your experience, Zinab, was that contributing to documentation is not as fluid for a Windows user. It, it just isn't, we need to improve that. And so that's that's a good one for us. Let's go to, we do have, we do have the participate page here that is the, our entry point Oh, whoops, participate. It would help if I could spell correctly. There. So, so this page has document on it and this takes us here. However, I suspect there are still, well, for instance, featured projects probably needs an update. Newcomers likely needs more. I bet that this takes us to, oh no, good. It does take us to GitHub, not to the wiki that, or not to the Jira site. Um, and yeah, that doesn't help nearly as much because we don't write with Markdown. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So good, good insight. We need to, we need to improve 
and and that's actually part of the part of one of the things that the Jenkins governing board has expressed concern about in their most recent meeting was let's improve the new contributor experience. Now, Zinab, you mentioned, you mentioned what tasks might a new contributor take uh, is, would you be willing to test drive with your eyes to see if, if this material is a good recommendation of things they might take? Or is sure I would. Um, so I think um, one thing that we really need to add to the contributor doc is how to actually set up Jenkins I because I'm not really sure that um, information is really explicit anyway. It shows how to on I think on the readme file or something. Uh, and GitHub, it shows um, how to um, run, make, run, and all that, but it doesn't really go explicitly into details as to how to set it up and all that if you don't have it. Right, because right, I absolutely. Remember, I remember when I wanted to start contributing and looking at the contribution guideline, yeah, building. Right, there's, so the, the building thing here is, is nicely suited if you've already got your system ready. But yes. if you're a brand new contributor, you don't have your system ready. You don't have exactly. Right. So there's Windows users, I think of others like me, FreeBSD users yeah. or Mac OS users yes. or the, uh, and, and some of those, it may, the answer may just be, sorry, you can't do that. Uh, because right now it uses a, if I remember right, we use a Docker image and that works for Windows and it works for Linux, but it won't work for these others. Oh, actually it might. Kristen, aren't you a Mac, Mac user? No, I'm a Windows user. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, so we'd we'd have to check, but I suspect in terms of our uh, our our population, we are our first population is likely Linux as current developers, and okay. then then next is Windows, and then going down from there. And Zinab, you you are the the excellent sample of this one yeah and i'm embarrassingly the one that i'm sitting on a, a windows box right now but i do all my doc documentation development on linux <laughs> oh and oleg is is a windows user yeah I, I do a lot of i live a lot in the uh the linux shell <laughs> yeah, for yeah, yeah for a lot of my development <laughs> right it, embarrassingly schizophrenic right oh yes yeah. let's see the fact that i i actually work in two worlds yeah okay good Zinab, anything else you'd like to suggest there on encouraging contributors okay all right so last topic I had was just a reminder that Google Summer of Code is coming. It's the uh, application is, we will, sub, sub, we will submit the application mid-February. We need more project ideas and we need more mentors. And this is a link to that, that page to, if you're interested in being involved on the coding side of Google Summer of Code. All right. Sorry for a 45 minute meeting. I didn't actually expect to spend so quite so long in our session. Is, has this session been too long for you, Zinab? Do we need to limit ourselves to 30 minutes? No, oh, no, it's fine. Okay. All right. Any other topics we should cover before we end our session today? That's it for me. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll talk to you in a week. All right, thanks. thank you. Bye. Bye.